What is going on everybody? Biebs here. So today what I'm going to do is a video that I've already done, but I want to do it better and I want to redo it on my new broadcasting software and also with my new gear that I found for the Crusader. So today what you're going to be watching is the Crusader Fire Seder Firelight build. Um, what we're going to start with is skills, then we're going to go on to gear, and then I'll briefly explain how the gameplay works for this build. Okay, so first we're going to bring up our skills. Now, your primary, oh, and by the way, this is strictly end game T6. I will not be going through level progression. I won't be going through what you need for T1, T2, T3, T4, and T6. I won't be doing that. This is only what you're going to want. This is your end game Seder, what you need for T6. So, you will not be using a generator for this build. That is a purely active skill category generator. Instead, on your left click, you're going to be using Fist of the Heavens, Heaven's Tempest. Now this is a fire build, so everything that I'm going to be using, except for this Heaven's Fury, is going to have a, uh, a it's going to be a fire skill so that it has good synergy with all of my fire stuff. So, first of all, Fist of the Heavens, Heaven's Tempest, Fire. So this is your, this is going to be your main spender, this is going to be what does all your damage. This is, uh, it's going to deal 255 weapon damage as fire and then another extra 100% weapon damage as fire uh, for the little bolts that that storm off uh, the Fist of the Heavens. Um, so this is, this is a great skill. Uh, it's a DOT skill, so you can pop a bunch of them in the middle of a pack and run away and it'll probably uh, finish off the pack unless it's in a leader or champ pack. Um, now, for this skill here, I use Heaven's Fury Ascendancy, um, but if you have a little bit of additional uh, cooldown reduction, you can use Steed Charge here, and if you use Steed Charge, you're going to use Nightmare, because it's going to deal 550% uh, additional weapon damage as fire. Um, so it's just it's kind of it kind of works like uh, the firewalkers work when you when you sprint on your on your steed, it gives you a path of fire behind you that does damage as fire to enemies. Um, you can use this, or if you want to have another damage dealer, you can use the condemn uh, reciprocate. So this one is weird. Uh, I don't like condemn reciprocate because it you proc it and then it charges up for like. What does it charge up for? Three seconds and then it explodes. So the way you would want to use it is you'd use it a couple seconds before running into a pack. Then you'd run into a pack, start attacking, and it would explode. Um, it's really not, it, to me, it's not the best. I just am really bad with timing it out. But if you're very good with timing stuff out, uh, go ahead and use it. Um, it does deal quite a bit of damage, especially if you take a lot of damage when you proc it. Um, so it might actually be more advantageous to proc it when you're in the middle of a pack and then let the damage being taken stack up and then explode. Um, but Steed Charge is the easiest. Nightmare is the best for that. Uh, but personally, I just use Heaven's Fury, um, and that's because I have some uh, some life per hit. Um, which one did I use? Ascendancy. Um, so when I usually I use this when I don't have Akrats up for the couple seconds that I don't have it up every minute. Uh, and that allows me to gain some to gain some life as I'm running away. Now the laws, I use laws of valor critical um, because it grants you 100% in crit, uh, increased crit hit damage for five seconds. Um, if you don't want to use a law, you could also use, as I said before, you can use the condemn here uh, or the or the sorry the condemn or the steed charge here and leave heaven's fury here. Or you can use your, let me look for it real quick, do, do, do. you can use iron skin and I would use steel skin here or another, op another option would be to use, to use reflective skin, um, but I, I personally would just use steel skin here if you're going to use it uh, and this would be for if you need a little more survivability. Personally, I kill quick enough at T6 to where I don't need this much extra survivability, and I can always run away and kite if I need to. 
So I stick with Laws of Valor and Critical. It does a lot more damage for those five seconds, and it grants you an increased 7% attack speed at all times. So that's nice. Um, always use Provoke. Uh, so this is too scared to run. Um, so this reduces attack and movement speed as, it's, as that's the rune that I'm using. But the key here is that you automatically, the reason why the Provoke is cool is you automatically generate 30 Wrath. Um, and an also an ag additional 5 Wrath for every enemy taunted. So it did, like what you want to do with Provoke is you want to run it when you're low on Wrath. And you've run out. You want to be in a pack and you want to proc it. Uh, and that'll probably generate at least 100 Wrath for you, assuming the pack is a decent size. Now, the most important skill that you're going to use, the one that is the core of this build and pretty much any Crusader build, is your Akarat's Champion with the rune. Firestarter. So Akarat's Champion is great because it, it increases your Wrath Regeneration by 5, it increases your base damage by 35%, and it does this for 20 seconds. Now combine this with the uh, Akan set pieces, and Akarat's gives you 35% increased damage almost 100% of the time, and gives you increased Wrath Generation. When Akarat's is up, I almost never run out of Wrath. Uh, I'm dealing a ton of damage. And the secondary on this fire starter is huge. So it says, I'll read it out word for word, you can read it right there. But what it is, is it deals damage to enemies, 460% weapon damage as fire over 3 seconds. Now anytime you deal damage to an enemy and he's not being uh, affected by fire starter, he's automatically affected for three seconds and it deals 460% weapon damage as fire. And you can do this over and over and over again. They don't, I don't think they stack, but they do, you can keep it up constantly. So you can be dealing a constant 460% weapon damage over three seconds to all the enemies around you until they die. Um, now defensive, uh, I'm not really using a defensive, I'm using shield glare. I guess that counts as defensive, but I don't. Uh, and I'm using Zealous Glare, and it's because of the secondary that you gain 9 Wrath for each enemy blinded. Um, this is just another quick generator because I don't have Akarat up 100% of the time. Um, and I'll go over that when I go over your uh, your targets for all of your critical hit damage, stuff like that. Like the targets for all your numbers. Um, and this is just, I very rarely use it. I only use it when I'm out of Provoke, which doesn't happen often. And I also need more wrath. Uh, this is also occasionally good for if you, especially on T6, if you're really taking a lot of damage and you need to get out of a pack really fast, you can use this and then just kite the hell out of there so you survive and don't die. Um, but if you don't want to use this, again, I go back, you can use Condemn or Steed Charge here. Uh, and you can also have then have Laws of Valor Critical up here. So basically it's just what you want to do um, if you have better Wrath Generation than me. It's it's your call. Uh, if you don't have as good survivability as me, you can use Iron Skin. Um, it, it's basically what your build needs, where you're weak, where you're strong, and what it needs. So these are these are the core. Uh, the real core is Fist of the Heavens. Akarat's Champion and Provoke. These three are your call. Um, you can change to different laws or the other skills that I mentioned. Uh, but I would recommend using uh, Shield Glare and Laws of Valor. You could change out Heaven's Fury to Steed Charge or Condemn if you really uh, choose to. Now, passive skills. These are also really important. So I use Fervor. Um, because in this build you will be using a one-handed flail. So this is an automatic 15 cooldown reduction and 15% attack speed buff, which is desperately needed because you are uh, you are using only one weapon uh, and the attack speed is kind of slow if you don't have a good attack speed increase. Finery, this is standard for any Seder build. So if you're watching this video and you're looking to make a Holy Shotgun build, Use Finery. Everybody needs to use it. Uh, it's just a straight strength buff, which is therefore a straight damage buff. Holy Cause. Um, this is this is also like required, in my opinion, um, because it's one of the few things that is a straight damage buff. I still use it uh, because even though like the secondary is a holy damage thing, 
I understand that like I'm using a little bit of holy damage with Heaven's Fury, um, but the, the the secondary really isn't important. The important here thing here is that the weapon, the amount of damage dealt by your weapon is increased by 10%. So that's just great. It's beautiful. Uh, it's it's one of the straight damage buffs that we have, and you're going to want to use it. Wrathful. Um, this is also standard. I think all four of these are pretty much everybody is going to universally use them. Uh, who's a crusader? So like passives, these are these are standard across the board. Um, this is a life per resource spent uh, passive, and basically it's just going to regenerate a shit ton of life for you. Um, so each point of wrath spent heals you for 825 life. I've got 114 wrath, so spending this whole thing. Uh, you're gonna get. I'm trying to think of how much you're actually gonna get here. You're gonna get a uh, hundred times eight hundred. You're gonna get. Uh, I think it's eighty thousand life um, for every time you fill up this. You get rid of this whole bar. So, gone over skills now. Let's go into your gearing and how the gearing will complement the skills that you're using. So number one, which I'm going to go over the, the most, the least in depth probably, but it's also the most important and it's the first thing I'm going to explain. So this, this a concept is your key. So however you need to build it, if you can get all six set pieces, so it's boots, pants, gloves, shoulders, chest, helm. So if you can get all six pieces, uh, you can use a Ring of Royal Grander and alternate, like if you want to use Mage Fist here, which I have here, uh, or if you want to use Cinder Coat for your chest instead of the Akans uh, Breastplate, you can. But Akans is super important. It's necessary for this build. Uh, it's the only way you're going to be able to compete at T6 and actually do it efficiently and not dying. So the key for the Akan set is... The four and the six set. Mostly the six, but the four set is also important. So anytime you have a cons up, you're going to have 50% reduced resource cost. This is huge. So instead of being able to deal, uh, what does this cost? So Fist of the Heavens is 30 wrath. So instead of being able to do about four attacks, I'm able to do about eight attacks before I run out of wrath. Combined with the increased resource regeneration, which we talked about earlier, this is this set is super overpowered. It's one of the best sets for uh, a uh, a character in the game, in my opinion, because it goes across all builds. Um, now, the six set is the most important part of the set. So, if you don't have five in a Ring of Royal Grander or six, I would honestly not even recommend trying to do this build. Look for something else that you can do at a lower level. Um, but basically. It reduces the cooldown of Akarats by 50%. So the cooldown of Akarats is 40 is 90 seconds. This automatically brings it down to 45. And you automatically have it for 20 seconds every time you use it. So you only need to get about 57% cooldown reduction if you have this six set. So uh, what you're looking for on this gear, on the helm, you want a socket for cooldown reduction. You want crit hit chance strength and either Vitality or All Res. I recommend Vitality, but All Res is also okay uh, if you've got a piece and it has these, but it has All Res instead of uh, Vitality. Uh, you really want to roll out for as much crit hit chance as you can get, uh, or if you don't have it, you want to try to get a Socket. Socket is huge because you get the cooldown reduction in the helm. For your shoulders, this is the exact kind of piece that you want. Um, so you want Strength, Vit, All Res, and Cooldown Reduction. Uh, shoulders are a very important cooldown reduction piece. It's one of the few pieces that rolls cooldown reduction. This is what you want. Uh, again, instead of all res, you could have percent life, uh, possibly, depending on what you roll. So if the say if this rolled strength, vit, percent life, and all res, you would have to roll out either percent life or all res. You're going to do that based on what you need. If you have low health but high resistances, you're going to want to roll out the all res for cooldown reduction, but you need cooldown reduction on shoulders, make no mistake. Gloves. So gloves, you basically either want a trifecta or you want cooldown reduction, crit hit damage. You want either what you see here, so strength, crit hit damage, crit hit chance, cooldown reduction, or you want to have a trifecta, which is crit hit damage, crit hit chance, and attack speed. Mm -hmm. um, 
My crit hit damage rolled low on these, so I've actually been looking for a new piece of the Akans. Uh, I want the pants so that I can bring in my mage fists to deal more fire damage. So anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. So chest piece, uh, this is basically, you want this or the percent life can be uh, exchanged with all res. Uh, it's whatever you get um, and whatever you need most. But you do need three sockets. So if you don't have three sockets, roll out till you get three. Um, that's standard for chest pieces. That's what you want. Uh, for the boots, movement speed is key. Strength, vit is key. Um, you could also get all res on top of strength and vit. Or as you see here, fist of the heavens damage is also nice. Boots are basically going to run the same. They're going to they're they're going to run very similar to each other. There's nothing special about it. Um, but movement speed, strength, and movement speed, core, and vitality are all res are key here. Um, and then whatever else you have on top of it is just a bonus. So we've gone through the Akans pieces. Uh, let's do jewelry really quickly. So this isn't a perfect amulet. This is. Fire skills, strength, and really good crit hit damage and crit hit chance. Perfect crit hit chance and nearly perfect crit hit damage. Uh, I've had a lot of trouble getting rid of this just because even when I get, say, fire skills, strength, all res, and these two, the numbers of crit hit chance and crit hit damage aren't nearly that high. Um, your best in slot is going to be the Hellfire Amulet when 2.1 releases, but for now your best in slot is the Haunt of Vaxo. Uh, it can roll fire damage, strength, vit, and then both of those stats. And that would be your best. Your best bet would be fire skills. Uh, it can roll 15 to 20. You want to get as close to 20 as you can. Primary, vitality, critical hit damage, critical hit chance. Uh, if you have the choice of rolling out critical hit damage or critical hit chance, it would be better that you get perfect crit hit chance instead of perfect crit hit damage. Um, but you want fire skill. You want... Crit hit damage and crit hit chance in primary. Anything else is a bonus. Now, rings are going to vary. So if you are running solo, you're going to run your Unity and your so Stone of Jordan and probably the six piece of Akans if you have it. If you don't have it, you're going to run your RROG and your Unity. Um, for any jewelry, you basically want either trifecta or primary crit hit chance crit hit damage so a perfect ring of royal grandeur would be strength attack speed crit hit chance by five percent and crit hit damage by fifty percent uh... this didn't roll nearly perfect I've, i i really don't feel like farming them anymore uh... basically the only reason you're using your ring of royal grandeur is for the secondary which increases your set bonuses um, but there's your ring of royal grandeur your soge uh, you want fire skills on it, and the higher the damage against elites, the better. Now, this is a very weak Soge, but I have I, this is the only Soge I've ever found uh, while playing, and I've put in 500 hours into this game, uh, probably 300 since Reaper of Souls came out, or 200, I think. Um, this is shit because it has armor. Armor is useless. Uh, you, you want fire skills, strength, probably critical hit chance and damage against elites because you're not going to be able to get critical hit chance and critical hit damage uh, if you have if it rolled like this like if this is what I got when it dropped and I didn't have to roll out fire skills uh, I would have rolled out the armor for critical hit chance that's what you would do so we've gone over jewelry now um, and obviously you're going to use this when you have when you're solo because you're you're it's damage reduction with a follower now let's go to we'll go to the belt really quick that I have so, excuse me, I'm going to take a drink. So I have a witching hour. Now this witching hour isn't perfect, it's far from it, but witching hour is great and it's perfect for this build uh, because it increases your crit hit damage and your attack speed. The attack speed is huge for this uh, because you're using a one-handed flail and you're not using two weapons at once because uh, a crusader can't do that. So you want to have a lot of attack speed. I'll go over the exact attacks per second you want when I go through uh, benchmarks for your stat categories. But this is great. You basically, on your witching hour, you want strength, and then out of these three, you want to have one either life percent, vitality, or all res. Uh, if you can get any one of those, don't roll them out for something else unless you really need all res or you really need something else. Say if it rolled percent life and you need vit, 
okay, you could do that, uh, but it, you want to roll out the critical hit damage to get perfect critical hit damage if you can. Um, this one rolled dexterity, so I had to roll out strength. Otherwise, I probably would have rolled out the critical hit damage for perfect critical hit damage, or I might have even rolled out the attack speed because I have a lot of it to get all res or something just to increase my survivability a little bit for T6. Um, good option, other options for this, if I can get my computer to work. Um, it's not working right now. So other there we go. So other good options for this are the saffron wrap, and that's just a straight tank belt. Uh, so if you don't have if you don't have a witching hour, just use something that has a lot of survivability, so that you can sacrifice survivability in other places until you get a witching hour. This is a really rare. This is one of the rarest items in the game, and I I, I still can't believe that I got it. So the last piece of armor that we're going to talk about is your bracers. Reaper's wraps, these are essential for the build. These are as essential as the Akans piece, set pieces. Um, and you want them to have fire skills because they're going to work well with your synergy. Strength, this is basically a perfect roll. This is fire skill, strength, vit, and crit hit chance. Um, again, you can roll out, you can have vit be other things. Uh, if, you're, if you're good on survivability, you might actually want to use increases fist of the heavens damage. Here, um, if you're not good on survivability, though, the vitality is fine. Um, so this rolled fire skills, I was able to roll out for crit hit chance. These are craftable. Uh, you And the, the big key here, sorry, that I didn't explain right away, is the secondary. If you look at that secondary, health globes restore 30% of your primary resource. So every time you hit a health globe, you get 30% of your primary resource. Now, if I had 150 wrath... That 30% would be 50 Wrath, which is almost two attacks of Fist of the Heavens. Um, and actually, it's two and a half with the, with the reduced resource cost. So Reaper's Wraps are huge. They're absolutely necessary. They fill in those gaps where your, your uh, Shield Glare or your Provoke doesn't give you enough Wrath to continue to spam your Fist of the Heavens. Um, and it also gives you Fire Skill damage, which is huge. Now, weapon. This is the biggest, this is the third biggest key. So I'm going to say first biggest key is your con set. Second is your Reaper's Wraps. Third is your weapon. Darklight is your end game weapon. It is the only weapon for this build that is really uh, necessary for end game. You could use Fate of the Fell, but this is the best weapon for this build. Make no mistake about it. Why, you might ask? The secondary. Sorry. Take another sip of my drink. The secondary is the big key here. So if you read it, Fist of the Heavens has a 46% chance to also be cast at your location. So what this does is for about 50% of the time, and I think that the max it can roll is 70%. Let's see if it... Uh, I can't do it right now. Um, I think the max it can roll is 70%. But 50% of the time, I'm casting two Fist of the Heavens. So that means I'm doing an extra half damage. So I'm doing an extra 150, an extra 50% damage just from having that secondary on that weapon. And then multiply that across all the other things that are increasing my damage. I mean, this weapon is huge. Dark Light is your end game. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about, and it's a piece that I don't have that I've been trying to get, that every time I get it rolls shitty because it's not really a good shield but it's the shield that you want to use. I have a Hell Skull. Now, this Hell Skull isn't doing anything for me because I don't have a two-handed flail, but it also rolled really well. Um, your basic perfect shield is going to be strength, high strength, perfect crit hit chance, cooldown reduction, chance to block, and if you're really lucky, you're also going to get all res, percent life, or vitality on it. Um, I would say percent life is probably your best bet for your survivability skill, but vitality is also a good a good uh, piece. Now, the thing that was nice about this was the 11% chance to block. It increases it to a 27% chance to block, so it's a it's an, a damage reduction of 27% to melee attacks. Now. Your best in slot for your shield is the lidless wall. And the reason why the best in slot for shield is the lidless wall is because it rolls elemental damage. 
Now ideally what you would want on your lidless wall would be fire damage, percent fire damage, which is rolls 15 to 20, strength, crit hit chance, heightened chance to block, and either cooldown reduction or a survivability skill. If you get a low crit hit chance, so if you get like 7% crit hit chance, but you get cooldown reduction, chance to block, and strength, and your and your fire, which would be fucking OP, you always want to work on getting perfect critical hit chance. You do not want to worry about rolling out cooldown reduction for survivability. What you want to do is get critical hit chance perfected on your shield. Uh, but Lidless Wall is best in slot. Now there's one more piece that I'm going to talk about that I've yet to find. Manor Cookie briefly talked about this, but he didn't explain it. And that's a ring. So instead of using uh, a ring of royal grandeur in group play, if you had a six piece of a cons, if you had the, the pants, which I believe are the quiesces, quiesces of a cons, uh, yeah. If you had the pants and you could roll a six set, you would trade out your ring of royal grandeur for a bulkathos wedding band. Now, what is so overpowered about the bulkathos wedding band is it has a proc. For the secondary, the proc is all enemies that are within 15 yards of you take damage. And I don't know the, I forgot the percentage of damage, but they all bleed damage. Now the reason why this is so important is because that secondary, which it, it gives bleed damage to all enemies, procs your fire starter uh, with your Akarat's champion. So you are constantly, if you have the Bulkathos wedding band, Assuming it's a pretty decent roll with crit hit chance and crit hit damage, you are going to be dealing a constant additional 460% weapon damage as fire to all enemies that are within range. Uh, so it just really does a shit ton of damage. If you want to see it in action, go ahead and watch Manor Cookie's video. <clears throat> Sorry, where he shows how it works. Now, if you have the full six piece and the Ring of Royal Grandeur, but you don't have a Bulkathos Wedding Band, and you're looking to increase your damage by using the Ring of Royal Grandeur and swapping out a piece of the Akans for another, my first recommendation is the Cinder Coat. Cinder Coat is going to also further reduce your resource cost by 25%, which means that each, each one of your Fists of the Heavens is going to cost less than 15 Wrath, which is huge. Um, but it also has Fire Skill damage on it, uh, and uh, and your strength category. So the fire skill is huge. You want to get a high amount of fire skill as you can, close to 100 as you can. That's why I would recommend this. If you don't have a cinder coat or you're happy with your breastplate of a cons, you can also use a mage fist. Now mage fists are great. Um, this one is literally perfect. I couldn't have had it roll any better except it could have given me 3% more fire skills. On your Mage Fist you're looking for fire skill, strength, and either attack speed or cooldown reduction and crit hit damage and crit hit chance. This is perfect in the attack speed, damage, and chance categories. It's very high in strength. It rolls a max of 750 strength and it rolls a max of 20% fire skills. Again, your best bet would be trying to roll out for critical hit chance being the highest as it could possibly go. Now, I finished with gear, and what I'm going to talk about last is what you should be looking at for your caps on your stats, your benchmarks for your stats. Strength, uh, I have 10,000, that's fine. Uh, you really don't need over 9,500, um, but as much strength as you can get is always good. So never turn down strength. Um, this is just the, this, this doesn't matter. Um, this is just what I'm getting off of my, where is it, boots uh, with the Fist of the Heavens. Um, bonus damage to elites is going to rely solely on your Stone of Jordan. Um, so that's that's just whatever your Stone of Jordan is. There's no benchmark for that. This is important. The tax per second, mine is literally perfect. 1.9 is your vanilla bread and butter, however you want to say perfect, attacks per second. And the reason for that is because anything faster, you're going to be expending too much wrath. Anything slower, and you're not going to be doing enough damage. This is your perfect range. Um, this is exactly what you want. Critical hit chance, again, min-maxes for everything is always 50% crit, crit hit chance, 
400% crit hit damage, otherwise you're going to be suffering in survivability or something else. This is what people have played for, they've tested for thousands of hours, and your min-max for critical hit chance and critical hit damage is 50% and 400%. Standard across all builds. Cooldown reduction, perfect cooldown reduction would be 57%. I'm not there um, and that's mainly because I didn't favor cooldown reduction and I favored uh, critical hit chance and percent fire. Um, but again, if you can get cooldown reduction here, 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 and some other random place, perhaps here, uh, you, and then your skills, you're going to have enough. 57 is your bread and butter range. That's right where you want to be. My fire damage increase is pretty low. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I can still run T6, not too fast, but fast enough. Uh, ideally, what you want for fire damage is 80 to 100 percent. Where are you going to get this? You're going to get it here with a legendary amulet. Uh, you're, you can get up to 20 percent fire skills damage. And if I were to get the Quiesas of Akans, I would put my Mage Fist here, and that would increase both these stats, and it would give me 64 percent fire damage increase. Um, and that's going to make up a, for a lot of points where you're not min-maxing here and your cooldown reduction isn't great because it's going to kill much faster. Armor is useless. Don't even worry about it. Whatever you get, you get. Block chance is going to rely solely on what your shield rolls. Your all reses, um, your all reses don't have to be that high. Uh, Minor, not bad. I can survive T6 uh, with. I can let me make let me make this clear. I can survive T6 solo with a Unity and follower who cannot die. I cannot survive T6 unless I have a very good group in group play. Um, but your goal here is probably about 800 for all of these. Uh, that would give you really good survivability. You don't need that much, um, but it would give you really good survivability. My toughness is rather low, but it, I make up for it because I deal a shit ton of damage. Um, life. So your life goal is, mine's at 362, you want to be at about 400,000 life and about 800 uh, all res. That'll be the min-max area that gives you a lot enough survivability to where you're not going to die easily and you don't have to worry about kiting from enemies at T6. And it's also going to give you leave you with enough damage to kill them quick enough that it's not laborious and very slow. Max Wrath is just going to depend on what you use for, res uh, for your allocation of your Paragon points. Movement speed needs to be maxed out at 25, and all these other things are just going to depend on gear. That's not a big deal. So, really quickly, at the end of this video, uh, and this will all be time stamped, uh, so you can, you'll be able to go into my co or go into the description and click on the time stamps in the video hopefully. Um, you're going to use your Paragon points to supplement whatever you're weak with. So initially your goal is going to be on core to max out your movement speed. This just makes everything quicker, uh, it makes everything faster, better, it takes you less time to do stuff. Max out your movement speed first and then either do strength or vitality, whatever uh, makes you Whatever makes you more whole. So if you have good survivability but you don't do enough damage, start with strength. If you do enough damage but your survivability is low, start with vitality. In offense, cooldown reduction is numero uno, number one. That's to ensure that you have Akarats up for as long as possible. Then again, if you have low crit hit chance and higher crit hit damage, start with crit hit chance. If you have low crit hit damage and high crit hit chance, start with critical hit damage. Do whatever one supplements you the most. The last one you're going to worry about is attack speed. Um, you don't want to have to use these to get it to the buttered range of 1.9 attacks per second. In this, for defense, I recommend starting with all res and then going to percent life. But again, if you have high all res, uh, you, can, you can start with percent life. Now, the, the order here to me would be all res, percent life, life regen, and armor in that order. I'm going to apply that point. Utility. Life on hit, number one. Uh, this increases your survivability by a shit ton. And the reason for that is because every time 
you use Fist of the Heavens, it not only casts and hits all the enemies around you, it has these little thunders that come out and do additional AoE damage to enemies around. So if you have 15 of those down and they're all hitting things around you, you're going to be having probably 30 hits per 30 hits per every couple seconds. So the life on hit will increase your uh, survivability by a lot. So in, in this order, I would go life on hit, resource cost reduction, uh, area damage, and then gold find is last. Um, area damage is going to, it's a straight like damage buff, but it's a really weird damage buff that's hard to understand. Um, and it's really actually not easy to explain either. So, this has been a full walkthrough of endgame gearing for your Firelight Fire Crusader build. Uh, I've gone through everything that you need to know. If you liked this video and it was helpful to you, please leave a like below. Uh, comment below if there was anything I missed or anything that you didn't like about the video, or if there's a question that you have about gearing, um, I'd be happy to answer those for you. Uh, I'm here to serve you guys, to help you guys. If you didn't like the video, uh, if you didn't think it was fast enough, if I didn't do a particularly good job in your opinion, go ahead and let me know in the comments below and leave a dislike if you must. Uh, but I hope this was helpful to all, and I hope that this expanded more and was a better looking video than my previous video that I did on this. And uh, I hope you all have good luck and good fortune in your farming and gearing uh, in the future. So this is Beeb signing off. I hope you have a good day.